Just come and take a listen From grown men with unbiased and honest opinions And with no agendas, so you just gotta check it Talking love and life from a male perspective We keep it authentic, real, no filter Leave a comment, be part of the show We here to give you five gentlemen's views About manhood, no doubt This the show you've been needing Yeah, it's the real shop talk, let's go All right, what up? We back. <laughs> uh, it's another episode, ladies and gentlemen, of the Real Shop Talk. We are live. Make sure that you let me put the uh, the website up here. Make sure that you share and invite, like on YouTube. We are trying to push this YouTube page, get these YouTube numbers up. Um, and you guys have been doing an amazing job at sharing. And, and we're loving everything that you guys are doing. The comments, the the DMs, questions that you that you sent us. We got some questions that that some of you guys sent us tonight. So you you also add value to the show. Make sure you go to realshoptalk.net. You can get all of our IG profiles and connect with us um, individually or together. Come back every Monday, 8 p.m. Tonight, we are talking about heartbreak. How does a man handle heartbreak? betrayal somebody cheat on you what do you do how do men process that it might be a little <laughs> it might be it might be a little different than you think we're gonna give you our perspectives we're not every man we just men that's not that, that are not afraid to share how we feel about things so um what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go around the room real quick um so we can do um some slight introductions and then we're gonna get right into it so um, first and foremost, I am Derek Jones. I am the host of the Relationship Gumbo podcast every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Um, I'm a certified life and relationship coach, and I'm just saying we're going to get it in tonight. I'm going to pass the mic over to my man, Tony Watts. What's good, people? Thank you for showing up. Um, all the credentials is right there in the line, tagline below. Um, you know, I'm, I'm glad you guys are here. We're going we're to share our truth, and we'll see how this lands. Uh, we appreciate you. Hey, y'all, what up, what up, what up? John Singletary here, man. And it's crazy that uh, on a night like this, my son is over here trying to play the DJ and playing uh, Luther Vandross. If only mm. for a night. <laughs> so, hey, we're going to get into it, man. I love what uh, Derek said, man. We're not every man. We're just some men that are willing to share uh, our experiences and our opinion, man. So I'm going to pass it on over to Gunner, man. Hey, what's up, guys? What's going on? I am Gunter Man from Soapbox Stand Up and Speak. Every Thursday night, you can meet me on Instagram at the Gunter Man Show at 730. Yes, I am here to give bits and pieces of my past to you so you can learn, I can glean from you guys, and we can see as a community how we can move past and build better beings, self-love, and operating from a place of truth. I'm looking forward to tonight. Cool. So we're going to get right into it, guys. Again, please share, invite, comment, like. Everything you can do, just click. Just do all of them, right? Just get them all in so that you can show us just and you can show your, everybody else. Your friends. Say it again. Send the link to all your friends. Send the link to all your friends. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and send them to your enemies, too. <laughs> <laughs> just send, send it to everybody. <laughs> they might get some value out of it, too. You never know. Um, so we're going to get right into it, guys. I got some questions that were sent in because, um, again, I'm going to repeat. You guys are the, the – well, oh, I'm sorry. How could I forget? You guys know that we're a crew of five. One of our members is on vacation. We just we just had a slight little conversation with him right before the show. He was able to carve out some time, and uh, he's having a ball. So, Tony Massey, we miss you, brother. And uh, – that brother and, out there exposed to all the taco meat and everything. He having a yeah, good yeah, time. Yeah, the taco man. meat he out. Time. He having fun. He diving in the in the water with the dolphins and the sharks and all that other stuff. Um, uh, Tony, watch. You wanted to mention someone real quick. Um, let let let's let Rick do that. That's that's you know, check check the comments, Rick. Check the comments. Check the, the private private. private. Uh, I'm not seeing. I'm not seeing the tab. The tab at the top. It say comments, and then it say. I think it say private uh, chat. private chat. We talked Wait. about it today. Somebody who who's who's been two weeks straight as our as our number one fan. 
that's always supported us for two weeks. Oh, straight. LaShawn. Yes. LaShawn, yes, yes, yes. Tony, you probably do a better job than me talking about it. But yes, LaShawn, <laughs> one of my people. Yes. Tell her, Tony. Tell her. LaShawn, for the last two weeks, you have been our number one supporter, and we deeply appreciate you. We're going to figure out something to do to send you a giant hug. Uh, just keep on supporting us, man. We, we we love it. We absolutely love it. The algorithm told us that Sean is the one. <laughs> cool. I did. I, you know what's funny? I posted that to you guys, and I'm sitting here like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> LaShawn, we, we love you. We value you. And um, and keep on coming back. We got, we got some heat coming for you guys over yeah, the next yeah. few weeks. Well, well, since we're talking about LaShawn, we might as well big up her, her business, the original hot dog factory out in uh, Vu. Oh, God, I can't remember the part, how to properly say <laughs> the New Jersey location. <laughs> That's right. But yeah, she owns the uh, original hot dog factory out in Boohoo, boohoo, we heal, something like that, New Jersey. I'm just watching that part. But yeah, if you're in the area of South Jersey, yes, please go and support. So, some support. She is a mover and shaker. Of course, uh, LaShawn, you could put the name of your the location out there so we could pop it up on the screen one time. Because definitely, if you support us, we support you. This is a community for us all to grow. Voorhees. Voorhees. There you go. Voorhees. Voorhees. There you go. That's the, I kept I couldn't get the R in there. Voorhees. New Jersey. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hot dogs are banging. Especially the the fire something. The fire something hot dog is real real good. If you like hot and spicy. And also um Kalisha Patrice from Hello Black Man and the Hello Black Man journals and they have an assortment of journals. She says um I'll send her a copy of our journal as a sponsor for the show. Tell her to send me her address. So, LaShawn, um, inbox Kalisha Patrice. Um, her, her her comment should be right above yours. And, uh, yeah, real. let's get it popping. We appreciate wow. you, hello, black man. Love is real. Thank you, Kalisha. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's it. See, this is, this is community right here. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's growing exponentially. We love it, guys. Just keep on, keep on being attached to us. Um, and like I, like I told a couple of people that support us earlier, we like you don't have to go through these things that you're going through by yourself even if it's not us we can route you to who i was like you i said the difference between what you've done in the past and what you're doing now is you got a crew behind you that's you how go. we rock yeah man so that's that's the whole point of this community sure. um so let's get into these questions uh first one uh, is is going to shed a little bit of light onto us individually and how we individually deal with, um, in this particular case, breakups. We'll talk about the betrayal in a minute. Um, so the question to the fellas is, in your past relationship, when you broke up, um, what was the primary way that you dealt with the breakup? How did you get yourself together? Or did you? <laughs> we gonna start. We're going to start this one with Gunter Man. That's right. <laughs> damn, damn, and damn. <laughs> That's all I got to say. <laughs> Come on, man. I'm a, I grew up an entertainer. <laughs> How you heal is with, with, a, with a new addiction. That's Just the I real heal. shop talk. So let's give oh, us the real. Well, all right. Well, as you guys know, for those, if you're new to the show, um, I grew up an entertainer. I, do a, I grew up a dancer choreographer. And I've been on tour since I was like in 11th grade high school. I've, I've traveled all over the place and made connections all over the place. Um, but living that lifestyle, uh, I never got to the place in my life where I actually formed real connecting, long lasting relationships because you're just going from one to the next to the next. And a lot of times, like I couldn't tell you how even the relationships ended. So, was there a bruise or was it hard? But it had to be, if I'm going from one to another to another, there had to be some type of trauma or something I grew up with that caused me to do, to have that type of behavior. And it wasn't until maybe more recent times when I realized that it was due to my mom being sick so often and me growing up with 
quote unquote, abandonment issues. Since my mom was in and out the hospital for most of my childhood and teen years, I had to be dropped off at aunties and uncles' houses. And I grew up with two sisters. So it's me and my two sisters, which were super tight, even to this day, super duper tight, where they would get sent off together and I would be sent off by myself. Sent off by myself. So I don't know if that, that, that feeling of abandonment played into, well, if I'm not getting whatever I'm getting or if things are starting to get a little bit rough, I just move right to the next one. And being in, in the entertainment field, people are always coming at you. People are always coming at you. So you're just kind of like not even thinking about it, just moving to the next one, moving to the next one. So it was three weeks, three months, six months, three weeks, three days. It's just moving to moving to moving. So how I dealt with breakups back then my younger years is that I really didn't give much thought to it. I really didn't. You know, I knew that it hurt because I was into the person. It's not like I ever, not like I ever, ever, ever said, well, you know, let me go to this club and meet this girl so I could go do whatever. I never, ever did that. That I'm wasn't my, that, that's triggered. not my style. I'm triggered. Say it again. Say it again. Wait, I didn't hear it. I didn't hear it. I said, I said, I'm triggered. <laughs> but, but I'll get my turn in a minute. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure you're about to outpour. But yeah, so how I dealt with it then, I think was was a whole lot different than how I see relationships now. You know, being a single guy now, being a guy who's been divorced, um, who've who's had a girlfriend after the divorce and felt connected and and that fall apart. How did I heal? I pushed back from the seat. Once again, after my divorce, I pushed back from trying to jump into a lot of different things. I pushed back from going after stuff. And I said, look, this time after my last girlfriend breakup, I said, I'm going to take a break and I'm going to find out my whys. And, and it's real because that one really, really hurt. That, that breakup really, really hurt because in my head, I thought she was the one. You know, you get to that place of your age and mindset that I no longer have to look for someone anymore. I found her. But it wasn't the truth. If I stopped and I looked at the, what I was preferring, my preferences wasn't exactly what was best for my life. So what I ended up doing, it I pushed back. I went through this whole celibacy thing. Yup. No sex. Again, <laughs> to figure out if I'm going to go towards someone, I want it to work. I'm not just trying to hop from one person to the next person, to the next person, to the next person. I want this to work. And that's the way I did until I started to find answers so that I found real connections. And then to become this better me, this better version of myself, where I almost always operate from a place of self-love, caring for myself, and two, then no matter what, I'm going to live my truth. Singletary, you up. I'm saving the best for last. <laughs> and the blast ain't me. <laughs> hey, can you, can you repeat the question? What's the question again? <laughs> What's the question again? Repeat oh, you know the question. the question. How you handle your how you handle when you when you break up? How do you how do you normally deal with it? What's your what do you normally do? How do I deal with it now or how did I deal with it then? Then, because we because now we all claim, you know, we all we all <laughs> not claim. We did of not say claim. <laughs> nah, I um <clears throat> so I wrote about it and it was something I struggle with the gift of goodbye. You know, so like that. You know, people say, oh, I go and get somebody else. It's never been my thing because letting go is not my thing. Um, and, you know, I mean, growing up, you know, we were just, we was in the neighborhood, man. So it was violent, destructive behaviors, you know, getting into fights. Uh, there was one breakup, man, my high school breakup, like she shattered my heart, man. And <laughs> I always I tell that story, man. It's funny because I was, I was she was at her sister's house and I'm on the door. You know, I'm trying to get her to come out and she in there with some dude. 
And I'm going between talking crazy to the dude and then talking to her like, why are you doing this to me? Don't do this. So, <laughs> you know, it, it, it's crazy, man. But, you know, and that was a situation where um, I think the statute of limitations is up. I almost shot that guy, man. So, um, man, I did very destructive, self-sabotaging behaviors. I would drink. I would smoke. I would uh, go home and be to myself and just really dangerous behaviors and um you know i think i think it prevented me from getting into relationships you know new relationships because i would hold that anger i would hold that grudge for a long time um and you know my attitude you know i'm like you know what she hurt me so i'm gonna go hurt other folks the best way i know how you know with these you know and you know that that never works out and it was it was just a bad thing so yeah i went through a period where i had to really develop as a person because i was tripping i was tripping and i i i'm not gonna say break it up is fun heartbreak is fun now but i try to be a little more healthy and self-regenerative about it but i still i'm not really a fan of of the gift of goodbye i ain't got that gift yet i'm going next tony watts <laughs> 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 um uh and, and I, I was saying GI last week. G hurt <laughs> says toxic John. Yeah, I, I'm y'all know me. <laughs> I got stories. Um, but for the interest of the show, I give you the cliff notes. I think the way I handle in the past, the way I handled um heartbreak was I was the club dude all day that was where i knew i could go at the drop of a dime and i knew it was gonna be some women in there i could dance with them i could holler at them whatever and it wasn't even about sex it was about attachment right like if i'm detached i want to feel attached so these little bursts of little band-aids was enough for the moment but then when that moment is over, you got to keep, it's like a drug. <laughs> Instead of me pulling back and saying, let me breathe. I was like, no, I got to hurry up and replace it or else I'm going to be by myself or else I'm going to actually have to feel this. Even though, you know, it hurt. This was my, go this is all I was trained. Go, go hunt. We talk about this all the time on this show. Go hunt. You go hunt. You're going to get the gratification. You might get a couple pats on the back from your boys. You might, and I was doing that. And what ends up happening is when you when you consistently attach, you might stay somewhere too long. Next thing you know, you're a boyfriend. You hadn't even really gone out on dates or anything. You just, oh, damn, I'm here. You set yourself up for another one that you got to pack on top of the one you had before. <laughs> and it's like a cycle of terror. And you just keep doing it. And, it, and I did that for so long because I was like, I don't know how to be to sit with the pain and really understand what it feels like, what it is. Let me just go ahead and find me a bunch of band-aids so I can feel better right now. And it took me a long time to figure that out. Like, you know, we all know we can tell other people, take some time for yourself, be by yourself until it hits you. <laughs> and I was the dude, like, you know, along with the clubs comes the alcohol. You numb in the pain. I'm in the pain. I'm not even a drinker like that. But when I'm when I'm socially out, you might have one or two more than you normally have. And you're like, wait, I don't normally drink like this. And you don't really relate it to. It's about her. I never resolved it. I had to come to a realization of that um, a couple of times. And I was like, this ain't this not my normal behavior. What is this about? And I think a lot of times men as men. Sometimes we have these kind of like things that we just react to, but we really don't know how to deal with the emotion. And so the, the actions that we do is it's just a matter of survival almost. Like this is this is what I know is gonna make me feel better, but we don't we we weren't blessed with having the, and most humans aren't blessed with these tools that we need to kind of get ourselves back to a point where we can go and seek out healthy relationships. Because by definition, if you're hurt and you don't take time to resolve it, you are now looking for a trauma bond. 
right? Like if I'm not, if I'm still broken, I'm gonna go some go somewhere to make somebody make my brokenness feel better. And the easiest place to go is to go find somebody else that's broken. <laughs> Cause, cause now y'all both speaking the same language, and and that's it's it's unfortunate, but that's how I did. That's how I did stuff. Like I was the I was the first one to run to the club real fast because I knew I, that was a quick fix. Cause I it wasn't like I can just walk around the street with my game. No, you go to the club. Everybody's you know everybody's in there having fun. That was that path of least resistance for me. So I did that for for a while. I didn't know how to how to deal with that stuff, especially when um when I got. Um, my my first marriage when I got divorced, we didn't fight. We just knew it wasn't going to work, and we and we did that. And after the divorce, I was like, "I'm good," but my behavior wasn't good. That's how you can always tell. The mouth will say one thing, and then I was going out. I was going like when I got divorced, I was out Thursday, Friday, Saturday, <laughs> Sunday. I was drinking. And I'm like, I'm good, man. Cool. I'm, I'm out. I'm free. <laughs> I was hopping on planes, man. I was, man. I did that too. I bought a brand new car, couldn't afford. I done hopped on planes. I'm going to all these different cities, and I'm like, I'm looking at my bank account, like, yo, what are you doing, dude? Where's this? And even while I was in it, I still didn't relate it to, to, to the pain from that, because you spend time with a per, a long enough time with a person. There's connectivity built there, whether it's negative or not. You don't realize it as a man because we don't we don't necessarily live with those emotions. We just live with I just need to feel better. We don't look at it as I'm getting on these planes because I'm hurt. I'm getting on these planes because I'm free and I'm happy. And I, no, you feeling you're filling a void because it's not like you got on the plane and then you got on another one next year. You getting on the plane. You going you what city I'm going to next. That's not, that's not, <laughs> that's not, that's not normal behavior. Distractions, boy. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, before we go to Mr. Watts, I'm going to uh, pull up some of these comments. Uh, Lalita says, fear of feeling our feelings so we keep running or we shut down. Yes, ma'am, absolutely. TK's Chronicles of a Black Sheep Podcast, you are right. The tools were like a unicorn. Yeah, we did. We we had to get these tools if we ever get them by trial and error. <laughs> but now, like I always tell you guys on this show, you know, and and a lot of us do, we can no longer say we don't have access to resources. And and, and we we pro, we we are providing somewhat of a resource. We can route you to places. You got the internet. You have all the YouTube and all. Not that every all the information is good, but you at least have something to go off of. So. We got to we have to we have to encourage each other to do better in these situations or we're going to keep repeating the cycle. Um, G Hurt says coping mechanisms. Tashura says I did the same when I separated. Dope discussions with Erica says whenever there's self-destructive behavior, there's pain. Absolutely. This is why I tell you tell y'all every time you see somebody that's like an egregious, like a predator or a player, it's some it's something that it's something to that story. You, you may not see it up front. He looks like this evil person, but something happened. I, I guarantee it. Um, John Singletary said Derek got stories. <laughs> um, <laughs> Black girls getting their shift together says my passport was stamped running. Yeah. It ain't nothing like going to a new city and just getting some new energy and and, and, and new people and you don't have any attachments. That's what you call it, new energy? That's what I'm going to call it, John. <laughs> Come on, man. I'm trying to be good here. <laughs> we'll give you some new energy. <laughs> you caught that, right? <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, new. That's what you like. Know, the people always say, you know, to get from one, you got to get under another, and all that. Man, we, okay, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, <laughs> but yeah, like almost like remember when you talked about like you can say one thing with your mouth, but your body will tell you, or the habits will tell you something different. I went through what I didn't like, know it was like depression, yeah. going from this mean, rip, slim dancer. I, I went up to. 250 something pounds in weight. I weighed. 
just sitting home watching TV, didn't want to go out. But yet, if I had a moment, I'm hopping on a plane, racing, going, traveling, go, go, go. Depression, depression, start yeah. eating and eating and eating and eating. Got, I got bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's one of those things, man, that we, that we very, very rarely touch on, especially from men. We just go. And then our friends will be like, man, go ahead. Yeah, man, go to another city. Cool. Go ahead. Go to go. It, it, it's never that conversation. Like, are you good, man? Are you, are you good back then? Nah, never. <laughs> All right. Let me get a couple comments. Did Tony watch? Um, Akira Thurman says, I was a little self-destructive after my first marriage as well. Um, Tashir says, seriously, new energy. Uh, dope discussions uh, with Erica says, new energy, really? Yeah, I'm calling it energy, damn it. <laughs> we we, we going to call it energy tonight. Uh, Black girls getting their shift together says, all of the above are socially acceptable coping behaviors, but yes, still destructive. Um, Tashir says, lies, that's toxic behavior. Uh, TK's Chronicle of a Black Sheep says, I hate that get up under another phrase. Yeah, it, the phrase sucks, but a lot of us that we we did. It was almost it, it, to me. It was almost instinctual. Like, let me go find somebody else real quick so I don't have to feel this. Didn't he have to think about it hard? No, um, I, I don't know if it was. I think it's more like, let me go be happy. Yeah. If I've been going, if you break up with someone, that means you've been through a long moment of unhappiness. So let me go and be happy. Be with someone that makes me happy. Be happy. Yeah. But you come to find out that life isn't all about happiness, being happy. That's that's not yeah. what life is all about. It's okay to be happy, but life isn't all about being happy. Yeah. Um, get a couple more of these in and then we're gonna keep it moving because we got a few, we got some more questions coming. Um, emotional eating, Esmeralda says, absolutely. Um, that eating feels good when you sit, but them damn after effects, not so good. Yeah. <laughs> you ain't gotta tell me twice about that one. Um, G Hurt says, uh, oh, she's saying everyone hit the like button. Absolutely, we appreciate you on that. Uh, y'all are just let me know what I'm gonna stop because these things my eyes are hurting. I just about uh, to say, man, you gonna ever let Tony answer the question? Bro? I'm trying to. I was wait. I was trying to wait until it slowed down, but it ain't slowing down. Tony Watts, you're up. Well, you guys said everything I needed to say, so get back to the questions. Oh, stop it! Stop! 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 <laughs> Let's go, man. All right. So, um, for me, I'm a hunter. So, um. I, I did a lot of hunting, uh, especially when I was hurt. So I, I was going to drop some names, but I'm not going to do that at this point. Um, so first high school sweetheart, we broke up, and it was like, oh, wow, that hurt. But I didn't really think about it in, in, in the aspect of, of what it was doing to me. You know, I played football. I was, you know, Rick, Rick understands. Like, I was, I was in the end crowd, so I, I went out collecting. Um, got the second girlfriend, stayed with her for several years, you know, prom and all that. And when we broke up, it was more of an ego thing, like really broke my ego. Like I was like, wow, like how did that happen? And my dude's just like, oh, yo, so she, she, you know, you got her from the corner, like like, like the actual corner, but she was, um, she was somebody that people didn't really notice until after I started really dating her. So after we broke up, um, I got with this, this, this girl that I really fell for. Like, it's my first love, love, like crazy love. And when she broke my heart, it was crazy. Like she came to the crib and she was like, yo, I, I can't do this with you anymore. And that's all my past destruction that caught up with her because someone went back and told her that I was talking to some chick in the mall and the chick in the mall had just really, I was talking to her, had just innocently asked me for directions. It wasn't anything crazy. I was just bubbly, like talking to her, Hey, bye, and somebody saw it, and they, you know, they went and ratted me out. So when she came and told me that without giving me a real reason for what happened, it crushed me. So I walked into her house. I was walking back to my house. It started pouring down raining. I'm walking in the rain. I'm, I'm, I'm sad, and I'm, I'm dealing with all these feelings. I walk in the house, and my mom's just sitting on the couch. Now I'm, I'm like 18, between no, I'm like 19 to 20 years old. 
I walk in the house, my mom's sitting on the couch. I just, I went to the couch, laid on my mom's lap and cried like a baby for like two hours. For like two hours, just bawling. Stop playing football. I was, I was on semi, semi protein. Stopped playing football for a year. I stopped socializing with people. A lot of people got caught these hands because that's how I got down. Like it was drinking, you know, back in the days it was 40 ounces. So it was, it was, the backyard would be full of 40 ounces. You know, who, who drank that's five? That's tone. I'm on, I'm in the corner, sloshy and lip, you know, inebriated. Yo, let's yo, let's go downtown. Yeah, let's go. Let's go find a fight. We would go to um, bars with predominantly white people and and knuckle up, and start bar fights, you know, and all that all that good stuff. So that's how you know um, I handled that because I, I had no one to tell me like what you're going through. You need to stop and um, and deal with the hurt. You need to stop and deal with what that hurt looked like. Um, so. You know, my crew was like, you know, go, go ahead and do your thing as, as far as keep, continue to collect. And, and, that, and that's what I did. I, I just, I, I would bring, like, because cause what, what we as men do when you think you're a, a playboy and you get your heart broken, they're going to let you know you're not what you thought you was. How did this chick break your heart? Like, how did you get, your, how did you, get your, how are you not playing the thing that you love the most? How are you not playing football? How are you not doing this? How are you not doing that? Um, so what I started to do, I started to, 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 to collect again. And I would bring all kinds of vibe, all, all the exotics. I would bring them to Fourth Street Park when the basketball game was going on. I would bring them by the crew. I would bring them to the house one and two at a time. And dudes were like, yo, how you doing that? Well, mind your business, this is what I do. But I was still lost inside. Like The pain was so crazy inside. So I really didn't understand um, what was going on. So I, I didn't shut down in, in those times. I, what, I, what I did was I... I, I, I was just very destructive, right? So, you know, everybody know who's not really, um, who's part of this podcast probably knows that I'm going through a divorce. And when this happened, I shut down. I shut down for a lot of years, like, because I could not understand how, it, like Rick says a lot, like, how is this not working? How I'm not, how is this thing right here that's supposed to be forever not working? So I couldn't, I couldn't fathom it for a very long time. And, um, John, I don't know if you've seen when I put in put in the comments when you said uh, the problem of letting go. Stuck, though. Stuck there. So that 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 whole letting go syndrome, I, I understand what that, that's about. So that was, you know, that's what that's what I went through. That's you know, that's the uh, that's the iceberg top topping of it. So we can we can move on to the next question. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir, for your candor. Uh, <laughs> Uh, black girls getting their shit together said that was a band aid over a bullet wound. Man, my brother said he would pull up with the exotics. What? <laughs> yeah, you see, like, um, you got to understand, like, Mount Vernon is four square miles. Mount Vernon is four square miles. Tony Watts was Tony Watts. Like, you know, when you had a kid that you said his full name, that's how popular he was. His still to this day, Tony Watts. Put an S on my name. <laughs> That's I'm um, talking super duper popular. So how how do you deal with a breakup, like publicly? Because everyone's in your business. Like how can it happen to you, You're Tony Watts? So you yeah. figure you have to now overcompensate for all that stuff to shine brighter in a new way. Yeah, the kind so, of the false air as yeah. if. You're not really affected, but Lord knows in your private times, I'll let you tell that story. So, so as Rick says that, just to just to give you some more context, when when I um was engaged to my wife, um, we would go places, and dudes would say to me like they would come to meet her, like, and I would be like, yo, this is this is my um this is my fiance, and they would literally say things like, yo, they were looking like, what did you do to him? Like, what what spell did you put on him? What, what, like, what did you do? Like, my walking song for my marriage is I'm not going to be a player. So just just to give you some context. Yeah, when you popular, that thing hit different, man. Because everybody's watching you. <laughs> everybody's watching you. So I, 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 I wasn't that dude, but I understand. I understand it. Um, so next question we have here that was sent to us was, is, uh, let's see. When you are heartbroken, do you actually, when you're, 
I'm a I'm a reframe it so to make a little a little more sense. When you when you break up or are heartbroken, when you're telling other people what happened, are you saying she broke my heart, or are you going to say something that makes you look like oh she played me, she ain't she ain't this or that, you know? Um, and then do you recognize the difference between sharing what it really is versus you um, kind of making yourself the hero all the time? So it looks like look like you might want to say something, Rick. Um, I, I'll defer to John first. Go ahead, John. <laughs> wow. Defer to John. Yo, back in my teens, early 20s, that's all you said. She played me. She played me. I mean, you know, real talk. <laughs> in high school, I got played. But, uh, yeah, no, like, since I've become an adult, man, I'm real open about it. I'd be like, yo, she shattered my heart, like, it's in my chest shattered it to pieces, you know, and that's, um, I think I've gotten to a point where, um, so you give away your ability to, um, impact change in your life if you don't take responsibility for things. And so if something happens, and I'm putting it on the other person. I give away my ability to heal, to get over this. So now nah, I take that thing head on, man. And, you know, it's been uh, <laughs> it's been a rough road since my divorce about 11, 12 years ago, man. It's been a lot of uh, heartbreak along that. So but now nah, I own it all the way. But like I said, back in my teens and 20s, man, that whatever, whatever played me. You know, that that's the only way you knew how that's the only language we even knew how to use when we referred to it. Anybody want to go next? I guess I'll jump in. Uh, for myself, like I shared before, you're just moving on to the next one, to the next one. So I don't know even if there was a real conversation, you know, because who would I share it with? Because people was like, okay, well, you're only with them for X amount of time to the next one, to the next one. So they're not even like, that wasn't a serious relationship you were in. But then I can stop and think when I did have some long lasting relationships, won't say names, someone in the Rochelle, um, someone from Yonkers, where they long lasting. I, I, I'm with me to try to remember what I said about them after the breakup will most likely be the typical stuff, not blaming myself, not blaming myself. Either I'm going to present the side of I'm the hero, all the things that I did right or the victim, all the things that she did wrong despite all the wonderful things that I did. But what's the truth of it? You had to play a part. You had to play a part. Even when you allow people to do stuff to you, it's playing a part to your own, uh, own trauma, to your own situation, to your own downfall. But with the mind I have today, I own it completely. The mind I have today, because there's only power in owning my section of it. Understanding this, that if I say it's just the other person, I'm actually going to say that all that I'm going through right now, all that I'm feeling is because of some other human being did all of this to me or did I play a part? Because if I say that I, it was my fault, owning the parts that's mine, then I'm saying that if all my bad decisions led to that destruction, all the right decisions will lead to just the opposite. And that's why you do not want to get caught up blaming the other person. You just don't. You want to find those angles that you played in, even, even to the point of what did you allow to take place in your relationship? Is you being a victim, you being a villain to yourself? That stuff, it all registers as stuff you've done to yourself. And then, as I know you're about to pull up the red flags, if you move past the red flags and then you connected yourself after seeing the red flags that said stop, that said stop, you kept on going. You became the selfish one in the relationship. And then you kept making the decisions that wasn't right for your particular life. And now you want to be mad at the other person. Think about it. You saw the red flags. You decided to keep going, and yet to your girlfriends and your guy friends, you're going to talk about all the things that they did wrong. What about your ass? Oh, Rick, 
Rick hurts two weeks in a row. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Listen, um, I think that uh, everybody's made some very solid points on this particular subject. Um, when you're young and you're hurt, uh, you, you will say, um, you know, it's the other person's fault. They played me. They did this, that, and the third. Um, but as you get older, I think those statements are one and the same. Um, you know, uh, they played me or they hurt me. I think they're one and the same because if, if the person did play you and you're saying they played me, or you can say they hurt me, um, it, 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 still, it, still, it still has the same um, genesis. So um, I, I just, I, I believe it's where you're at. And what, what Rick said it best, if you haven't done the work to figure out you know, what, role, what role you played in it was the red flags there in the beginning and you just ignored it because you were having a great time and now you want to say you know uh they played me you know you were let you were letting you know her or him go out with their friends four days a week you know come home two three days later and you kept your eyes closed then you know that's really not their fault like <laughs> the play the, the playing was happening on your playing field you just you just wasn't paying attention to it so uh, it depends on where you're at in, in maturity level for that for, for that question for me. Uh, so for me at this level, it can go both ways. All right. So here's how I'm going to frame my answer. Because <laughs> I got a big plane I'm going to land real quick. Woo! <laughs> like, a, like, a jumbo, baby. like a jumbo jet. <clears throat> so, so for this question, uh, to, to what um, Gunter Man was saying, I was always the hero, right? Ooh. It was never my fault back then. And here's why. It wasn't even about, about just me being a hero. This is where the sinister part of it comes in. I would only use it when I was trying to get in the good graces of a new woman. And the only reason that I would do that is to build empathy for myself from her. And what a lot of women have a habit of doing when they feel like he's showing me that someone else did this to him and he's hurt. I can identify with hurt because I know what that means. Then what ends up happening for some women is they want to try to prove to you that they're not that woman that hurt you in your story where you're the hero, right? So now they're going above and beyond to try to show you that, that they're not going to treat you like, and you just sitting back like, Thanks. And a lot of people do that, men and women, but this is a man show. So I'm going to tell you how this works. If I'm the hero, someone broke up with me. I feel bad. Why did she do this to me? It's all her fault. In a very little way, it almost looks emotional, right? What don't you see from most men, ladies? So now there's a part of you that says, oh, I want I want to make him feel better. Gotcha. Gotcha. I'm landing my plane. That, bro, that brother went in there and pulled the tray on Boys in the Hood, the punching at the air. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought that was so whack, but I guess it works. <laughs> so we're going to... um. It was one comment that I wanted to go back to. I think it was um it was very uh hold on one second. It was, was it the um, one? Huh? Was it the one about healing? Oh, G Hurt. She said it seems strange to hear men having detachment issues. It's strange told, because we don't share it. Right. I told I told you we all the same, love. Yeah. That's like, that's that's Jennifer. We'll call her Jen. She, she, no, she don't like that GI thing. Well, G. Yeah, yeah. I, start, I, I know not to do that now. <laughs> but that's the bliggity thing. black, black, black. Call him black. <laughs> black, 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 black. <laughs> that's the thing. The biggest misconception is that, number one, men don't have the emotions. But number two, we go through, like, most of the same emotions you do. It just doesn't look the same. We got them. We hurt too. It just don't. It don't look. It doesn't look the same. You might not right. see a tear, but you might see me doing something destructive or something. That but the behavior for men, it's it's how we act. Y'all y'all can feel it and show it. We may not have the space to do that, 
but we gonna go get a drink though. We gonna go mm-hmm. do like you can <laughs> you can see the pattern change. It's distinct. Yeah. Um. So the next. <laughs> Hold on. You you me. also have the aspect of say for those guys who who deem themselves to be one of the good guys. I'm a good guy. What you'll end up doing if you don't drink, if you're not getting to drugs, if you're not into the beating the people up, you become what's known as a giver. Yeah. Follow me. A giver that gives not simply for the fact of trying to meet the other person's need, but you're giving for the from a place that you're hoping that they'll stay. You're yeah. giving because of whatever you've been through has left such marks on you that now you're, you're, you're using your financial ability to, I got you here, I got you there. And then you become this really amazing listener because now you're not just giving general things. You're listening to conversations. You're listening to needs, ebbs and flows in their lives. And you're giving f- to support those things. Where in your mind, you're like, I'm an amazing guy. I'm an amazing guy. But no, what you are is a broken boy trying to find ways to to beg someone to stay with you because you've been hurt, because you've been let down. You got to ask yourself, if you, woman or guy, man or woman, if you become a giver, giver, you constantly giving, one, the person that you're giving to, you haven't let them, you haven't allowed enough time for the first gift to have a lasting impact and you already given them something else. Right. Secondly, why are you giving? You're now giving as a form of what? Manipulation. Yep. And if you're giving with the hopes that they stay, if you're giving with the hopes that they will act and respond to you like you do to them, it's a manipulation. It is a manipulation. And if it's a manipulation, you heard me say it over and over again, even if you get what you want, it will never meet your core needs because you manipulate it to get it. You manipulate it. It's almost like, hey, tell my man I like X, Y, Z, Z, Y, X. And then then next week he does it. It doesn't have the same impact if he just paid attention to you long enough and then just did it. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, Couple comments, then we're going to go to the next one. Um, Jen Hurt (laughs) says, (laughs) <laughs> That's scary. I've never allowed men to play victim. I dig into it before nurturing those emotions. Um, black girls getting their shift together says people pleasing is a trauma response. It's real. Yeah. Um, Charlie Poem said, when you point a finger, you will always have four pointing back at you, no matter the relationship and who's to blame. Both sides will always have shortcomings that should be addressed. Growth lies there. Absolutely. 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 Um Tashura says, damn, this just made me pinpoint trauma bonding conversations and why I did what I did in the situations. And Love Tucker says, when someone tells me they are a good dude, it's a red flag to me. LOL. Like, it's up to me to judge, not for you to dictate. Yeah. So (laughs) TK's Chronicles says, uh, when I hear I'm cut from a different cloth, it's a red flag. Same cloth, different spot. (laughs) (laughs) So, so, so the next question, uh, and I'm gonna frame this one a, a slightly different, just for um, just for ease. Um, <clears throat> does getting involved sexually or emotionally with another woman after a breakup help you deal with the pain, or is it a distraction? So, to to kind of reframe it, when you do go out, or if you have gone out and dealt with other women as a means of kind of like putting a Band-Aid over the pain, do you feel like on the other side it helped you get over it? Or was it just simply a distraction? Did it actually do anything for you? Because, you know, so nope. I'm going to let I'm gonna let Tony Watts nope, answer that nope, one. Nope, 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 nope. Um, because I've experienced it, I've, I've, I've had conversations with, uh, with people who say, well, I broke up with them and I'm over them and um, I haven't seen them in six months to a year and I'm done. Da, 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 da. And I had this person and, you know, I'm dating this guy now and he, and I love him. Well, I'm dating this girl and she's this, that, the other. And I go, when's the last time you saw them? And like, I, I, I'm done. I'm done. So as soon as you see that person, because you're not done, all that emotion comes rushing back in 
and everything that the person you're dating or having a relationship was that even slightly mimics what that person that you haven't got over yet um, does is going to bring up some new wounds and some new hurts. And then you're going to start saying to yourself, yeah, I remember when such and such did that. Uh, yeah, I, I don't like when you do that because that reminds me of such and such and such and such. You start st talking all of these, uh, this, this, this triggered language, but you know, your mouth is saying I'm over it, but your, 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 out, your outer self is saying I'm over it, but your inner self is screaming I'm not. And so I think that's something that we really need to dig into. And it's, it's, it's great to have a, a, a point of separation before you start digging, um, being with somebody else, because I'm going to tell you the, um, bodily connection the sorry excuse me gentlemen the new energy will fool you the new energy will become a new drug the new energy will tell you everything is okay especially when there's multiple energies i'm gonna land right there <laughs> oh so i'm gonna answer this one real quick and then i'm gonna let one of the other gentlemen um take it i think in the moment you think it's helping Right. On the other side of it, it's definitely a distraction. There was a realization that I had to come to because I, I was like, yo, I'm, I'm still not happy. <laughs> this must not be the way because it's not working. Like it, it's been like I keep saying it's band-aids. It doesn't it doesn't give you fulfillment for real, because on the other side of it, you're still empty. And now you feel like you got to go get it again. So obviously something's not. Something's, something's disconnected there. And I had to realize that that disconnection wasn't getting me what I ultimately wanted. Like the, the person on the inside wanted something meaningful. The person that was hurt was like, meaningful, we'll get that later. I just need to get, I, I need to not feel like this right now. So the, it definitely, the answer to the question is definitely a distraction ultimately. Um, but like I said, when, you, when you're doing it, you think that this is gonna help you. Like this is your therapy. Right, and it's and it's so not. So I'm a, I'm gonna land there. For me, it felt like it was helping. It was helping me. It felt like it was helping me. I don't care about all what you guys say. Nope. It felt good. It was helping me. It was getting me back to the place where I was feeling some level of joy about the day. Happiness, a skip to my step. Spring, Mr. Man worked. I want to go. It gave me an edge. It gave me an attitude. It gave me my swag back. That's what that's what it felt like. So you can say, okay, after a while, you may believe that you get to this place where you're like, okay, well, it really was a distraction. It really was this. It really was that. But now, now, <laughs> no, 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 no. It felt like it was helping me. It gave me back what it felt, what I lost. That's the truth of my story. Yes, as you get older, you can think about all that other stuff. But if you've gone through a relationship that it just didn't work, and you spent a lot of time in situations, no, you're going to feel like getting back out there is, is like, yes, people still want you in it. And here's the thing. It's more about getting back out to the place where you see and feel that people want to be with you. Like you have another chance at finding love and getting into a relationship. Uh-huh, look at it, tell the truth. I'm, that's it, right? It, I, I'm telling you the truth. It felt good. You could you could say what you want. I'm the I'm, I'm I'm sorry, real shop talk. Real shop talk. I'm this is how we do. It gave me a lift. It gave me the feeling that people wanted to be with me. That's right. And after a long situation, no, you want that. Yeah, the energy was good. <laughs> yeah. Good. Yeah. The energy was good. I love it. I love it, man. Uh, Gunner Man came with that uh, contrarian opinion. I appreciate that, man. I'm I'm definitely not of that opinion. That's never been <clears throat> that's never been the way it works for me. Like um that heartbreak, man, that's an injury. You know, if I if I injure my ankle running some more on it. That's not going to make it feel better. And that's a real injury for me. And I have to, uh, I have to take a knee. I have to take time to, uh, to process that. And obviously I talked about being younger and processing it in terrible ways, but you know, um, 
they've they've discovered that you know when you have emotional pain, your brain uh, feels that sensor in the same area where you feel physical pain. And, and you know, uh, here recently I was going through some emotional things, and you know, I was telling some of my accountability partners like, "Hey, man, I, sometimes I just have to take a seat in the day because that thing is overpowering." And uh, for me, nah, you know, getting back out and, and trying to find a surrogate, it it doesn't work for me. Um, and again, that probably ties back to my inability to properly administer the gift of goodbye. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I I um, don't get me wrong. Have I tried it? Absolutely. You know, and you know, to to Gunnerman's point, you know, sometimes it makes you feel wanted. But uh, it just doesn't do the long term for me. And I've always been a long term thinker like, you know, OK, on Tuesday, I feel like the man, you know, but, you know, how am I going to feel on Thursday, Friday? I'm going to still feel terrible. So what do I need to do to really dig in here and get to that? You know, and, uh, you know, just uh, nah, <laughs> it's been some some situations, man, where I let fellas talk me into stuff, which in your mind, you think, oh, that's what I always wanted to do. And in reality, it ain't nothing I ever wanted to do. So now I learned at an early age that ain't that's not my you know, that's not my thing. So I have a couple of key comments I want to bring up here. Um, Charlie, Charlie Poem says sex is better when you're in pain. The more pain on both sides, the deeper the delusion. But since it does, since it does heal, the, del the delusion will eventually subside and then it's just sex then it's I'm bored or who's next. Um, somebody said, Gunter Bear about to go get him some right now. <laughs> uh, uh, um, uh, let's see here. Uh, Love, Tucker, Love Tucker says, um, the funny part is we acknowledge therapy is, is needed. Labeling having new energy as therapy tells you you needed actual therapeutic practices. Luckily, we 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 know better now, so we can do better. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I wasn't calling it therapy back then. <laughs> this so, this so, is new if new information. All right, so I want to I want to drop this in here behind um, Charlie Poem's comment because it's, it's it's necessary. And <laughs> so when you get with the guy that you consider the bad boy, right? And he, he's the he, he's he's the untamable. A lot of times when you're having sex with him, he's coming from his emotional trauma and his pain. That's why it's so different than, than somebody who you call, consider a nice guy. Because a lot of guys is out here that, that don't have a place to, 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 to let go of their uh, pain and release the pain they're going through. They take it out on the women that they're having sex with. You know, it's, it's the pulling of the hair. The spanking of behind, the choking, all that, all that aggression sometimes has has a lot of underlining meanings, and you thinking that it's a lot of passion for you. It's just a passion for the situation. I just want to put that yeah. out there for people to understand. That. Um, I think two more um, comments, and then we got another another uh, big question coming behind uh, behind this. Um, Shanika Lewis says, "So when you get back out there and getting under someone else, how do you avoid getting attached again?" Then like, like, was this one of the 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 energy dash type drop offs to avoid door it? dash? No, what's no, that? that ain't no, what she no, it ain't door. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't door. <laughs> so look, I'm gonna answer that one because I because because I am this ghost of. <laughs> uh, I was a ghoster because because. If you stay somewhere too long, you will get attached. If that's not your attention, you either got to hurt their feelings or you just got to disappear and keep it moving, right? It sucks, but that's what happens when that's the reason why you're going there. If that's the reason why you're going there, you don't plan on being there long term. It may be one day, it may be one week or whatever. But in that moment, could one of the people that you choose be somebody that you emotionally attached to? Absolutely. We're human. We're human. But then there's, there's got to be a point where you got to cut it off, too, because your intention was never to be with them. And sometimes, like I like I was saying earlier, sometimes you end up being a boyfriend and you don't even know how you got there. You're like, damn, I've been here too long. She asking me and you don't want it to go nowhere. Right. Because the energy is amazing. So you're like, OK, yeah, I'll be a man. And that relationship is built on on Jello. <laughs> <laughs> I can speak for myself in regarding this. I remember after 
going through my divorce, I really fell for someone. Like it was a genuine connection, but we lived the world apart. You know, she's over in England, I'm here. And my heart and, and intentions towards her was pure, was pure. But how do you build a relationship off of visiting, you know, like it's almost like you're on vacation, not really knowing what it's like to be with someone in the everyday twists and turns of living. So I wouldn't know that. I didn't know that. But for the person, oh, no, it was I didn't plan on getting out of that. I wanted to stay in that. But I saw that situations. How would I ever get to really know her? And that's my truth. So here's the next question. Now we're going into the betrayal. If you were betrayed by someone that you were with, cheating, whatever it is, um, did you, I'm trying to frame it in a way that, that makes more sense. Um, how did you handle the betrayal? Um, because, it, because we're talking about different than you having a breakup, how did you respond? How did you deal with knowing that that person cheated or they betrayed you? Like what instinctually happened inside that head of yours or the heart or, or your, or even your actions? I'm going I'm to let Tony Watts go. Why? You, okay. Um, uh, I, I'm sorry. I wasn't, <laughs> I'm between two places right now. I'm, I'm looking at uh, Kalisha's uh, comment and uh, I'm looking at <laughs> uh, John's comment. <laughs> You will drop off the D. <laughs> We're breaking case of emergency. So I'm going to deal with, um, right before I deal with your question, I'm going to deal with um, Kalisa's question. Um, there's a difference between aggression because I care for you and I want to be with you and this is, what we, this is what we're exchanging versus I am hurt and I'm going to take out all my aggression on you. There's a difference. Um, so I, I hope that makes sense. Um, so Derek, could you reframe your question for me again? If you have been betrayed before, cheated on, betrayed by a significant other, how did you handle that versus how you handled the uh, actual breakup? How did you handle the information of knowing that you were betrayed by that person from a male per perspective? Again, that's a, uh, that's a maturity, uh, uh, answer for that. It depends on where you're at when you're younger. Um, it, it could be somebody could get these hands um, when you which, when you mature, uh, you start looking at what how did I contribute to somebody cheating on me or somebody betraying me? Like how did I what, what did I do to contribute to that? You got to really look at yourself and go, was this my fault? Was I was I out too much? Was I working too much? Did I pay attention? Did I did, did you know was this a work a work husband or what, you know what happened? Like how, how did we lose our emotional tie? Uh, for this to happen and, and, and where was I involved in it? And then after you scrape through all of that, you find out, you know, the person just has an overly active sex drive and they needed something different. Then, you, you know, you, you got to deal with that in that aspect as well. So um, I, I think it really depends on where you're all, where you are at, at a mature level to really uh, to deal with that question. But for me, um, the first time I was betrayed, uh, somebody's about to get hurt. Um, somebody, a couple of my friends had to talk me off the ledge. So, yeah, because that's because when you betray somebody, that's that's a lot different. I said that's a different thing, you know what I mean? Because, um, like I said, when I was out there, if you cheated on me, okay, I, I'm cheating on you. So what? You know, that's you know, I, I don't I don't believe in um, the whole. You got to be loyal to me when I'm out here doing all, all I got to do. I don't believe in that. So if I if I look at myself and go, hey, Tone, you've been out here, so. You know, you, you, you made the space for that person to do that. But if you betray, betray me, like I'm, I'm, I'm here and we have real conversations, and you go do that, then that's a whole different ballgame. Especially if you do it with somebody I know. Then, then that's, ooh, ooh, sorry. It's like, that's, <laughs> well, we're going to just uh, pass the, pass the, the, the we're going we go, we go to co-pilot co -pilot this to somebody else because we won't land that plane, we'll crash it. <laughs> I don't know. Anybody want to go? Cause y'all know I got stories. Man, I um, I got cheated on. Well, it, it's happened 
a couple times. As I got older, you know, I remember the last time it happened, I was like, you know, I don't, I don't even want you anymore anyway. So like, I see what you had to do, what you had to do. I'm just out here being loyal, but I ain't really want to be with you no more. But man, that first time, oh man. And, and it's crazy because she knew what our relationship was and she cheated and I went after him. Like that's that, it's that stupid man. And, uh, there's a mall in San Antonio, uh, TK's Chronicles of a Black Sheep podcast. She know which one I'm talking about. Wall, uh, Windsor Park Mall. Man, I saw him at Windsor Park Mall, and he was with his boy smiling. And in my mind, he was smart laughing at me. Right. Man, I got my hands on him. I tried to throw his ass over the rail in the mall, man. My boys had to get me off of him because he was going to die that day. And the crazy part is he ain't do nothing that right. she didn't let him do. Like, right. And but oh, I got at him, man. We had to go back back and forth a couple of times till finally I had to let him know, like, no, I might not be lover boy, but if you want to get in this violent stuff, I'm real good with that. <laughs> <laughs> you know? he, he finally had to back off, like this, this is not what you want. So but uh no, that was I mean. And we talked about this before we started, man, with betrayal. And I was saying we probably need to clarify that because when I heard yeah. that word betrayal, the first thing I think about is somebody betraying my trust. And I got to get at them. You know, I got to get yeah. next to you and show you what yeah. it is. You know, yeah. like we're not doing that. We're not doing that. Absolutely. Um, Younger me wouldn't even pay attention to it probably wouldn't even know that it, whether that it happened because I'm just going from one to the one to the one to the one. But in a major relationship, I had to, I had to take ownership. What part did I play in this? You know, that's what got me through being able to pay attention so much that like, where did I fall short? Like, damn, okay. I wasn't doing this. I wasn't doing that. Damn. And I wasn't doing it. She, she had the right to do it. Like, 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 mm -mm. I wasn't, I wasn't playing my position. She had the right to do it. She had the right to do it because I wasn't playing my position. So there you go. Um, Later on after, I mean, more recent times, I, I wouldn't even know. I wouldn't even know. Cause you know, you, you, you in, you're engaging people to see where they're at regarding relationships, mindsets, you're trying to verbally find what, what fits you and what doesn't fit you. And right now I'm still up in the air with these, with these things. All right. So I'm going to need like about. <laughs> <laughs> Take your time, sir. So look, let me tell you, let me tell you, cause I'm, I'm, let, I'm making sure we don't go too long. <laughs> It ain't going to be that long, but I, I need to provide context. And I think the only reason that I'm doing it this way is because I need for people to understand and also identify because you probably you probably been in a situation. Well, I don't know. This is kind of crazy. But the, the one. So. So first of all, to answer the question, when I when I found the news, I was devastated because I was like, because I'm the giver. So if I'm doing all of this. How could you possibly find something better than this? I'm doing everything. How could you do this to me? And so here's a little short little story time, right? And I think I was probably maybe mid twenties, and I'm doing I'm doing the most. I'm I'm the, I'm your man. I'm handling business. What you need from me? I got you, baby. She didn't have a car, right? So every weekend I would take her to her cousin house, right? Y'all know where I'm going with this. I never met the cousin. Wasn't her cousin. I'm dropping her off. Then she stopped asking me to pick her up from work. And I'm like, you don't have a car. Oh, I'm going to just catch the bus. What you catch the bus? Your man got a car. And I'm all naive because I'm thinking, this my girl. You know, maybe she whatever, right? Then that one fatal day when I let her take my car. She wrecked the car. The car was out of commission for a week. That week, she couldn't be found. I finally catch her. And she says, I said, yo, 
You cheating on me? She said, yeah, I'm with him now, and it's good, too. <laughs> I was... I, Both of them are about to die today. Today. <laughs> they going to die today. What? Ego, feel... I didn't even... Ooh. Yo, devastation, right? Ooh. And she didn't care. And so when you talk about like situations where you find out stuff like this, what do you do? The first, my whole, my first go-to like was anger, but then I really slipped into what's wrong with me, right? Here's the, here's the, here's the, where I'm trying to get to. I did not have enough faith that I was doing my part that I automatically went to, why would she not choose me? And that is what, what created kind of like that, that break in that downward spiral was what's wrong with me. And when I did not have the answer to that, that's when I started to become this person that did not have empathy for other women that I would meet because I assumed that they had the potential to be her and I didn't care. And that is what the lesson in this is when you do not have the tools to cope, you start to do other things to try to make yourself feel better. And a lot of times that hurt person go, we talk about this all the time. You go out and you hurt other people with impunity and you're worried about the collateral damage later because it's all about serving you. <laughs> and that's what happened after that. And it, and it that thing right there, that was the last, like I had a couple cheat before that, but this one right here, that one, that was the one I yes. will never forget. Yes. I don't even know what I would do that if I man. saw her on the street today. <laughs> right. That's, that's the one where they have you looking in the mirror, not knowing who you're seeing. Like that one, the effects of that. I mean, obviously, my first response would be mad violence. Mad violence. Somebody is going to hurt. You're telling the story now, and I'm like, what's their name? I'm going to go look them up today. Where they at? That's true. Live out here. <laughs> nah, you got me here triggered because no, yeah, I, I can that? get I can get to the place where I can see all the things that I did wrong, but I went after his ass. I went after his ass to his house. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, I got to go. I got to come see you at your house. Yeah, <laughs> I tried to throw him there. over a railing. Bring the audience inside his house. Wife between. His wife between him and me, I'm going after him. Yeah. You Even though I still, I can see all the things that I fell short in. Yeah, you got to think about it like this. If I was a different, if I was a, a built a different way, I knew his address because I've been taking you there the whole time. I knew where he lived. You still know where it's at? <laughs> I know. I wiped that from... <laughs> Damn, man. We but, DMV, but here's man. the thing, right? I appreciate you, brother, because that's true. That's a that's a real brother right there. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, Derek got Derek has story time. I might have to write a book one day. Um, <laughs> oh, you need to. Hey, we was hanging out Saturday. Listen, we met up at noon, and uh, <laughs> we were just going catch lunch man we was out there for four and a half hours Derek got stories like he giving y'all a little piece of it man he talking about books you could write a series of your <laughs> stories man yeah so 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 judging by how we normally wrap up i'm gonna do one more question and then that should get us right at our, our normal end time um uh i'm gonna just pop some of these up but i'm not gonna read them all um yeah, full house missing <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But Woo! back then, I, yeah, I, I just, I, I had no. Time out before you go there, go there though. Time out, time out. Uh, I, I, this is gonna, this is gonna sound very terrible, but she would have had to catch it too, because you, you had me going to do like, like I trusted you enough to be dropping you off. She somewhere. said, "I'm with him, and it's good." It's good. Mm. Yeah, everybody, everybody. That, that's she that's one of those um, late night. Uh, crime drama shows that everybody end up missing. That's what that is. Everybody end up missing. 
Hey, B, um, BK Gaming, I was I was never I was never mad at the dude. It was always her. I'm just saying, if I was a different nah, type of BK dude, Gaming, that's me mad at the dude. <laughs> <laughs> that's us mad at the dude. Um. Okay, so now I'm like, where did we go from here? <laughs> Uh, oh, Erica, Erica asked a follow-up question. That's how we're going to end it. She wanted to know, and I think I remember it, because if I have to scroll back 300 comments, she said something to the effect of, once you deal with that, how do you or how have you gotten yourself back from or, or to a point where you can trust tr trust again? Once you were betrayed, what what did you do or or how did you get back to being able to trust again? So anybody can take that. I'll right, jump so I'll with that one. You want to go? Your T Watts no, go. I'll, I'll, I'll come behind you. Okay. Yeah, um, I I no longer put put my trust in the person and the woman. I put my trust in my higher power. I trusted that I can give myself and be my complete full self into in the relationship, trusting that God. Is going to warn me about the situation. He's going to keep me in tune with the situation. And that's honestly, that is my dead truth. Meaning that I'm going to venture into relationships. I'm going to see how it goes. And I'm going to be the very realist version of myself. But my comfort was this. I might not trust the people because we're all imperfectly perfect, but I can trust God. And that alone gave me comfort to venture into new relationships, knowing that if they weren't right for me, I'm going to know and I'll know how to act accordingly. Yeah, uh, we're going to leave Rick at that, at that doorstop because um, no. Mm -mm. Um, when, when, you, when you deal with that level of betrayal, it, it, there's a different... We all talked about it earlier, right? You, 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 you. Depending on your maturity level, you deal with how did, I, how was I to blame? What did I do? And, and you work through that. But that level, that particular level of betrayal, it, you gotta, you know, you gotta. I, I just, I, I don't want to say it live on the air because you know, there's there, there's a, a statute of limitations to some things, or, or there's no statute of limitations to some things. So I, I just want to like, that's. I, I can't I can't fathom. Um, I, so let me just tell a quick story. I had a young lady that that I dealt with um, doing my doing my play player phase, and she had a cousin, right? And I had a dream that she was sleeping with dude. So I woke up. I was like, "Yo, I had a dream that you and blah 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 blah." She's like, uh, uh, "Should I cry? You caught me." Da 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 da. And I was like, "Oh snap!" But and 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 and. and, and but I wasn't mad because I was doing my thing. But I went to them and said, if I was a different person, you both would be dead because we hung out. We would go places together with you, with both of you. And you telling me you blood and you and you sleeping on my back. Like that that's crazy. So but what Derek was that he's giving car rides, he's he's giving a, he, he gave her his car to drive, she crashes his car, doesn't call him. He finds out, and then she says what she says. That's a level. That that's a level of. I, I take it this way. There's a saying that they say, you know, do it, um, do it first, and then act, act, uh, ask for forgiveness after. That's that's that that's that one. Lord, um, I'm gonna. We're gonna be like uh, we would have been like Charlie Murphy, be like, yo, man, that dude need help. We gave him some help. We whooped his ass. That's what exactly, the heck we gave exactly, him. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And then I go pray about that afterwards. Absolutely. But I thought the question was mainly based on how do you now get into relationships, right? Yeah. How do you, like trust, how do you trust now? So yeah, I wasn't thinking still of the, the mindset of the betrayal part of it. Nah, just man, how do you pursue relationships? Up. That's a lot more we confident. Get wound up. <laughs> I'm triggered. I'm still triggered. Sorry. Triggered. I'm triggered. The, the way you get into a relationship is hard. Like, especially if especially if that person has the same um you have to you have to walk away you have to really sit down filter yourself out and 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 move move on from a different angle like you can't you, you have to realize in your in your mind like 
that person, and I'm talking about their situation, was is a horrible person. That person's a horrible person. Most of most of human beings aren't that person. They're not horrible like that. So you can move on to a, a new relationship. You just gotta, you know, you gotta just make sure you're settled out, and you're, you you know you're no, you no longer have the trauma scars from from that particular thing. You know, listen, Derek did well. You know, I, I thank God for Derek's stories. Derek did well. Derek, Derek, Derek was able to land a plane, find a phenomenal wife that takes, you know, they take care of each other and they're doing amazing things. So, you know, men can get past that type of trauma because that's a whole different level of trauma right there. That's that's ugly. I, I'm going to jump in. I'm going to jump in um, just because <laughs> Jen was like, Derek need to answer this one. So I look, let me tell you. So here's the here's the real honest, like super transparent truth. I didn't. I did not learn to trust again. I did not care like that. Like there were two other situations before that that weren't that egregious, but they were close and they were back to back girlfriends. Imagine that you leave one that cheats. You go to the next one. They cheat. You go to the third one. They cheat. That last one was the one that made me not give a damn about nothing else that came after it. I did not want to, nor did I care about trust. It was about me. And that lasted probably, probably maybe seven, eight years. Wow. I did not trust. The only thing that made me get to a point where I could really trust again is I detached myself from the behavior. I got myself together, but that still doesn't elicit trust because I still, at some point, I'm going to meet someone else. And what do you do with that? That's Alicia, right? The only reason that Alicia broke through that is because Alicia had boundaries. Alicia was like, this is what you're not going to do. I see you. If you want to stay here, we got to we gotta keep it moving. And I'm not going to keep doing this as your girlfriend. We can play the little, like I told you guys this, like she would, she, every time I tried to deviate, she was like, no, sir, I like you, but I can't leave. <laughs> and at that point, I really knew that she had my back and I was like, now I can release it. If not her, I don't know. I don't know. That's just me being honest. That thing ran deep. And that's important that you said that though. That's important that you said that. Like a lot of, uh, women don't don't know how to speak up the way she the way she spoke up. She she had a she had a golden mind. She had a way that she needed to be treated, and she and, and she let you know I like you, but I'm not going to sacrifice pain for you. So here's how we're going to rock out. And if you don't want to rock out, please leave. Like because I'm not going to stay around here to do that. So that that's a that's an important lesson um, that that she, that, she, that she taught you. She made you comfortable enough to understand that she's not going to play these games. She she allowed you this space to come out. Some women don't give you that space. They don't understand what you're going through, and, and you can't verbalize, listen, I've been destroyed, and it's three relationships in a row, the same thing happened, and, and, and now I don't know what I'm doing, and, and I can't really trust you, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wild out. So she was in a space where she can go, calm down. I got you. No, 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 no. You're not going to – you don't need to do that. I got you. And that got you to a place where you said, oh, okay, let me trust her. Like, we, we got to understand that. Like, some women go into relationships and it's like, oh, he's not doing what I want him to do, and he, he, he keeps acting up, but they stay. And they don't have that real conversation with him. So the boundaries thing is important. Bravo to Alicia. Who next? Me? Okay, I'll go. <laughs> nah, man. Um, When you talk about that recovering from uh, – uh, a break like that. Uh, so that was teenage years. So I'm like 18, 19, still kind of processing that. I did not get into another real relationship. Oh, no, 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 no. I had the little, uh, <laughs> I had a little 30 day joint when I was about 22. <laughs> and she, she cheated on me, but that was the situation where I was like, I didn't want to be with her anymore anyway. So good. She gave me an out. Uh, but from that time on, man, I did not get into a serious relationship until I met LJ's mother. And I met her when I was 26 and I had, 
you know, I had experienced things. I had gone, I had deployed, I had been in wars. So I, you know, I was different, but I still wasn't even all the way there. Um, you know, our marriage fell apart. I had a lot of, uh, you know, relationship issues and, and, you know, I've been, um, I take big gaps between relationships. I haven't been in a serious relationship in over five and a half years. And I think the real work of figuring out what was going on happened when Tika, when LJ's mom passed away, because it's so final. Like when somebody dies, you know, you, you can't go and try to replay that or have a conversation about it. It's so final. And I had to look in the mirror and still try to figure out who I was and how was I going to be a parent to my son and how we going to move forward. And, you know, the first year or so, man, it was just survival of the fittest. But I really saw the hole and I said, man, I cannot be what my son needs me to be. I can't be what uh, my team needs me to be. I can't be anything of what I'm supposed to be, what I'm called to be, what I'm purposed to be till I figure all of this out. And so these last two and a half, three years has been a lot of unpacking, you know, trauma from childhood, abandonment issues, just all of that. And a lot of me and my bros, we be talking about toxic masculinity, like some of the little stuff that we thought was normal. Like we used to have that. Um, and, I, and I'm pretty sure y'all can, can agree with me on this. We had that thing where we'd be like, Yo, I tell my boys this, and then I tell my woman this, and I separate it. And, you know, we talk about how toxic that is, because when I get into a relationship, you know, the woman that I'm spending my life with, if I can't share it with her, it don't need to be shared, you know? And uh, so that's where it happened for me, because even though I changed my mold, you know, obviously I got security clearance now. I can't fight as much. And I ain't going to lie, man. I think about all the fighting I did. Like, I... I pulled my back looking at the uh I pulled a muscle in my back looking at the snack jar <laughs> in the kitchen. <laughs> other day, you know? <laughs> my body probably can't handle all that no more, but there's still toxicity in there. And you gotta clean that out, man. You gotta gotta do the work, man. You gotta really look in there, not oh, this relationship and I cheated, but who is the totality of who I am yep. and who I want to be? So one of the things that I've done is like I've just started writing down who I want to be, what's hurting me. I will, I'll, I'll look at my strengths and then I'll look at the adverse. Like, why does this strength exist? Is this a trauma-based strength? I'm strong because I was hurt somewhere or is this a natural strength? Like you really, really got to do the work, man. And it's scary. It's difficult. It's tough, man. It's light work. It ain't all sunshine and rainbows, man. It's tears and thunderstorms and tornadoes and all that stuff, man. But you got to dig in there and do the work. And so, I didn't mean to make this a whole TED talk about it, but hey, that that's that's where I'm coming from with it. What's up, bro? So, so yeah. I want to um, I want to answer this question that was directed at me just just for the and then and then if y'all have any final things to say, we can start wrapping it up because we had our normal our normal hour and a half. <laughs> so, um, Lashawn Daniel Drew says, Derek, at what point in a relationship did your wife lay down the law in the beginning? like month one or after you got to know her for a while. So here's so so here's the thing, right? It's and it's a power that all of you ladies have, right? When I started to to kind of maneuver into my mode of detaching or 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 behavior starting to different because when you start you know when when you go through the stuff that I went through, when it starts getting closer, you start getting triggered. Like I don't know if I can do and so she would see the behavior change. Right. And she would say, oh, hold on. Either you're here or you're not. I'm doing a lot for you. And I'm doing so much. And I'm just your girlfriend. At some point, based on what you told me, our trajectory needs to be going past girlfriend. Those are your words. What's up? And I was like, you're right. And then that gave me the permission to release it. Because I knew that she was going to rock with me, even when she saw that, that I was trying to go back into safety mode. 
y'all see y'all intuition and all that stuff, and y'all be like, oh no, it's all it's always there. And she didn't run away from it. She was like, I I I, I love being with him, but I'm not gonna just let him just do whatever the hell he want to do. We're not doing that. You got it. I don't. She told me this all the time. I don't have to be here. You know what that with that when you really feel somebody and they say I don't have to be here, you got to straighten up or, or get the hell out. So yeah. You know, it makes me think about like, I guess my divorce is maybe 12 to 13 years ago. And I can think about all the ripping and running that I did prior to getting married. And then all the things that I thought I was doing to heal afterwards. Then you really just get, you know, I got myself into another relationship and that one didn't work out also. Just when I thought that it was going to be. Then I got myself into one after that where I thought that it could be something. But the time and the distance between the two was too far. And then I said, you know what? Let me just rest. Does that make sense to you guys? Like rest, stop trying to look for the empty fix, the short fix with the hopes, with the hopes that it's going to be different. No, if you're going to, if you're going to be different, you want to get different, you got to do different. And in order for you to do different, you got to start thinking different. You got to start speaking different. Well, in order for you to think different, you have to go to sources outside of your norm. You have to go to sources outside of your norm, no longer your crew, no longer the typical books you read, no longer the things that you would normally go to to gather information. You had to go to sources outside of that circle. And when I did that in these last five years to six years, I saw the change. Now, could I speak about going to God back when I was ripping and running and doing all that madness? Could I speak? No, I couldn't. I couldn't speak about God in a way that that would change lives because the fact that I was hurting, I was looking for distractions. But now, speaking of who I am now and the work that I put in, like John said, like you just can't you can't mess around with that because at some point you just wanted to stop. Just to stop, like stop. Like how am I going to get different? How am I going to see different? How am I going to be different because you think it's all about the doing of this and the doing of that. It's not. Is that you've been called for a purpose. And in your calling, when you are living your calling, that calling is causing you to become something. And that's where I'm living now. I have become something where I can use all my past to help heal others in the midst of me still healing. I can lean on these guys right here, the real shop talk, and share my heart in a way, and they will call either Bolton or I got your back. I can run with you on that one. Tony Watts, am I telling you? I, I, I could run. Legacy men sitting around talking, real talk, Saturday morning, 10, 10 a.m., brothers in tears. And it's just me at some point just sharing bits of my truth that just triggered other dudes to kind of start telling. Next thing you know, you're hearing about a divorce. And next thing, and it's like real. Like, men, we don't have a place to go. We didn't have, we didn't have a place to go to share, but we do now. We have a community of men and women who are willing to pour bits and pieces of their experiences into me to strengthen me. So when I do speak about God, it comes from a place that, no, you're not alone. I have strengthened you with power from on high. I have caused you to be the great man of God. So yes, you did what you did, and I can't change that, who I was and what I did back then, but I have become something new. And it's not simply that flighty talk about God. No, we had to put in work, which like John says, means pain, this means sometimes tears, which means sometimes you just resting. Stop. Things are not going to get better just because you think that you deserve better. No, you want better. You better find new things that are better. Tie yourself to those things and then it will, it will affect your thoughts which affects your words, which in course affects your actions. That's why I can trust when I go to my new relationship. Anybody have any last thoughts before we wrap up? 
Yeah, man, I got to give a shout out to uh, Nika for uh, peeling your muffin cap back blue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, yeah. that's my favorite comment of the night, man. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, so as we, as we uh, you know, land this plane for the night, we appreciate you guys for popping in. Um, but I, I think I think it's something else that we should talk about as well. When you're going through certain transitions and you're trying to heal yourself, friendships, right? Because uh, some people think men and women can't be friends. But friendships sometimes look like romance because you, you, you have this person who, who, like you meet somebody who's really cool. So you kind of vibe with them in a way and because it's a male female dynamic, it might seem like, is he, are they flirting with me? Is, is this going somewhere I don't want it to go? So I think that we should be like conscious of that. Um, especially when, especially when, you're, when, you're, when you're going through that phase and that connection things happen, especially when you haven't been in a connected relationship in a long time and you, and you meet a woman that's re re really nice and ha has a, re a great mind and you're, you're talking, you got to really say to yourself, wait, am I approaching this a little differently? Am I, am I stepping over boundaries when I really want friendship? Am I making it seem like it's something different? Like, I think, I think it's something that we really should uh, do in our process, think through. Because if we don't, we end up in um, in a situation we might scare away a good friend, or we might give somebody the wrong impression, and then later on you have a, you have to break a heart because you were out there uh, giving out a signal that wasn't really true. So I just wanted to put that out there for people to uh, really figure that out. All right. Well, we gonna wrap this up. Another one in the record books here. Um, I'm gonna start off, and we just gonna go around. If anybody need to say anything, oh, let me put up the. Uh, the site again. Make sure you guys go to realshoptalk.net. Get all the old shows. Get the replay from tonight. Share it out with people that you know need to hear this information. And if you don't, I, I guarantee I'm not even going to say if you don't. Somebody in your family or your friend circle need to hear this. Male and female alike. And, um, and, and we're glad that you guys came out, showed out. You commented like crazy. I know y'all thumbs and fingers are hurting tonight. We appreciate we appreciate you for the comments. We live for the comments. Um, bring your questions. DM, you know, if you go to the website, all of our Instagrams are there. DM us questions and topics that you want to hear in the future. We're we're community based. We're growing the community. You guys are part of the community. So share your thoughts, um, share your concerns, share your praise, and uh, and we're here for all of it. Um, I, I do my um, podcast relationship gumbo podcast comes on Wednesday at eight and we have a mystery guest on the show. So make sure you come. Mystery, tune guest, in. mystery topic. Huh? I said, tune in, tune in. That's right. So it's just bang. follow us, man. I'm not going to, I'm not going to be long. Just go to real shop, talk that net and connect, connect with me there. And I'm um, a pastor Mike to Tony Watts. No, Derek, you have to tell us what the next week's show is going to be about, sir. I'm not telling you because it's a mystery show with a mystery guest. I'm no, not no, not you. your show, our show. My bad. Um, next week is ladies' night. You could have did what? that, man. We we a team here. You, you, you <laughs> do it so much, so much better than me. You do it so much better. Right. Than me. Next week, guys, <laughs> as we as we have started a, tr a, a a tradition now here. This will be the second one. Ladies' night. We have three three more ladies coming on. We're going to be talking about this thing that's been buzzing around the internet, traditional women versus modern women. And what's the, what's the difference? What, what, what's the whole commotion about this? And, and what's the problem, the pros and the cons of either? Do you really care? Do we care as men? <laughs> Do they, they, I'm telling you guys, when y'all go on these different platforms, they go at it about this, about how you should be and how you shouldn't be and, the 2021 the woman versus the woman that's more traditional and it, it's a lot we're gonna get we're gonna get that in we have some ladies coming on the stage and, and we're gonna just hash it out so now i'm gonna pass it to tony watts <laughs> so um yeah me and um there's a new show that i i just started with uh jennifer it's her brainchild uh we came together um co-hosting with her it's called uh, monday wake up it's an inspirational show it's to help you get through your week. Um, we will be having John on on the 20th. 
Uh, so he can, and, and if you're not plugged into John and, 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 he, and getting his Monday uh, Monday mind hats, you, you're missing a, it's some incredible stuff. Some incredible stuff he gives. Um, so we're, we're, we're doing Monday mornings um, to, 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 to inspire you. Uh, we'd like you guys to plug in. It's um, on Instagram. It's, uh, it's uh, uh, Monday Wake Up. And what we do there is we, 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 we're accountability partners, right? So what we're going to do is we're putting out goals. So the next following week, we'll say, we, we like today we set goals for next week. So next week, we'll tell you how we achieve those goals. We want you to share your goals with us as well so we can all just grow and get to the place that we need to get in the spaces that we need to get into. So we appreciate you. Thank you for coming out tonight. Uh, pass it down to my man, John. Yo, Jen said Jen cares and don't nobody else care. <laughs> <That's too laughs> hey, um, so, man, go check out the latest episode of the help myself podcast um it's for everybody but ladies i really want y'all to check it out it's my sister um it was uh, lj's mom's best friend it's her best friend and it's an amazing interview uh man i really think it's gonna help y'all so go check that out man it's out streaming wherever you uh stream podcasts spotify apple um google wherever so go check it out man it's a really good interview and uh, for all of the nasty grams that I've been getting via text about not answering any of my messages on social media, I am taking a break. So all of the posts are auto scheduled. I'm not actually on social media. So y'all stop sending me these mean texts while I'm trying to have some father son time with my kid and put good energy into the universe and y'all saying all this mean stuff to me. It hurts my feelings. I'm sensitive, okay? Yeah, well, guys, once again, I'm Gunter Man from Soapbox Stand Up and Speak. My show is every Thursday night, Instagram Live at Soapbox Stand Up and Speak. Uh, this week, I have a fantastic guy from my Next Level Speakings Academy, where you get to meet him, Coach Mike, and he'll get to share his story and his truths. How did he get to this place? But I believe the week after, I'm going to be on the Help Myself podcast. That's right. I finally gonna have the gun to man, <laughs> Mr. Battery, Mr. Energy. Let's go. You can't see me, but you can feel me. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure that I'm I'm supposed to be on some other shows. Some people invited me to be a part of their show. So hopefully, if you want me to be a part of your show, just send me an inbox. Yeah. All right. Take care, guys. And I'm on Erica's show this Sunday. Actually, I think yeah, dope, uh, dope discussions. Uh, somebody asked a quick question, right? Because I, I know the answer to this now. It's calling a woman a, a, a female derogatory. I'm going I'm to I'm do this real quick and then we're getting out of here. So here's the sentiment of why a female is derogatory, right? I had to learn this. You can have a female roach. You can have a female bird. You can have a female dog, right? When you have a, 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 a human, a woman doesn't want to be in the category of all those other animals. So they want to be called a woman or a lady. Because a bug can't be called a woman. Only a human can, right? So this is why a lot of times, some if you say female, if you call a woman a female, they're like, don't call me that. Because they don't want to be categorized the same way the rest of the the rest of the animal. They want to, they want to have some kind of differentiation. I don't mean, it that that's why though. <laughs> so on that note, we go, we we land in a big, a big uh, I don't even know, John, what's the biggest plane y'all got? <laughs> The C5, baby. The C5. We land in that right now. Thank you guys for joining. Make sure that you follow, uh, subscribe, click the bell on the YouTube page. Go to the website, realshoptalk.net. And we will see you next week, same time, same place. Y'all have an amazing evening and please stay safe out there. See y'all next time.